Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, I'll explain the overall concept intended by the Demaic methodology of Six Sigma by comparing it to a real medical situation that occurred with my daughter Hannah. Now, there are just a couple of prerequisite lessons that may help with some of the terms and concepts that I use within this lesson, so it may be helpful to check those out first before starting this lesson. So let's begin by describing the five basic steps we generally follow when we're resolving a problem. Well, first of all, Six Sigma is best known, I believe, as a formal methodology for how we're trying to resolve problems. So in a practical way, that means we are trying to increase our confidence, which is the same thing as saying we're trying to lower our risk for the critical business decisions that we're trying to make. So let's break this Six Sigma th methodology down to the five basic steps we might normally expect to follow when we're trying to resolve a problem. First, when we encounter with a problem, we want to understand the problem. Next, we want to try to gather as much reliable information about that problem as we can. With that information we've gathered, now we can do some assessment on it to try to identify what's the root cause of the problem. Once we know the root cause, we can try to identify what the improvement is that will fix that root cause. And then once we put that improvement in a place, we want to sustain that improvement. So let me apply this in a practical way. An example that I want to give is actually a true story based off my daughter Hannah when she was five years old when we took her to the doctor. So the basic story of what happened was one day she was complaining about how her leg was hurting and as a typical parent for a five-year-old who tends to be a hypochondriac, um, we just basically acknowledged that yes, she had a problem and with a typical kid at that age when everything hurts, they want a band-aid or, or their boo-boo to be kissed for every situation, we did the normal thing that we did then. Well, we didn't observe any kind of injury or bruising or cuts or scrapes and she didn't say that anything happened to cause the particular pain that she was feeling in her leg, so we just didn't give it a whole lot of attention honestly at first and let her go about her way. But then we noticed that throughout the day she was continuing to complain about the leg a little bit more often than she normally complains about little boo-boos or things that she has. So I remember a little bit later in the day I was observing her as she was going down the stairs and I saw that she was limping when she was going down the stairs and she didn't know I was watching her. Now I started to think something is seriously going on. And again, there was nothing visible and nothing seemed to happen before she was complaining about the, the pain that she was feeling that would have caused that pain that she was feeling. So as, we, as the day went on, she later on began to scream because her pain was in leg and she couldn't bend her leg and we knew something was very serious with this. So we took her to the doctor and the doctor was looking at her and the doctor was asking the same kind of questions that we did and understanding about what might have led up to the pain that she was feeling. And the doctor was wanting to know some of the medical history for her if she ever encountered this kind of thing, which she hadn't. But the doctor concluded that she actually had arthritis. Now, naturally, as a parent, we're thinking, why is a five-year-old having arthritis? It just was very bizarre to us. So what the doctor said was, though, although the symptoms might have been arthritis, the doctor suspected the root cause for that arthritis and the pain that she was feeling was because of strep throat. So the doctor took a culture from my daughter's mouth and her throat and then applied a strep test to it. And from the strep test, it showed that it was positive. And then based off of that, the doctor was able to prescribe the antibiotics to help my daughter. Well, she took the antibiotics and within an hour of taking the medication, she was feeling instantly better, no pain whatsoever. But in, as a normal parent who might be familiar with giving their kids antibiotics, you normally have to carry out the entire antibiotics through the whole prescriptive method, which usually tends to be three, five, or 10 days as the doctor typically prescribes. Well, using that scenario here, what I want to do is, is go through a couple of questions. First, let's explore the various roles of the people that were involved in that scenario and how we might adapt that to Six Sigma. And also, I want to show you how we follow the normal problem resolution method, these five steps above, and using that same method that the doctor applied in trying to find a root cause, how we can adapt that to the methodology of DMAIC within Six Sigma. First, let's answer these questions by applying the situation to the roles typically found in the Six Sigma project and those five basic steps for resolving a problem. Well, as far as the roles in this scenario, we might say that my daughter Hannah, the primary person who is experiencing the pain, would be representative of the business itself, or maybe the process within the particular business area where we're feeling the pain. That is, it's the area that needs all the attention of why we need a project in this area and why we need some sort of improvement. It's where that pain is being experienced, where those symptoms exist. 
Well, as far as myself or my wife, we might be representing the sponsor or champion. That is, as the parents for Hannah, we're the ones who need to take care of her to try to do as much as we can to alleviate the pain that she's feeling. Well, in the same way, the sponsor or the champion are the ones who are ultimately accountable and responsible for that business area or that particular process. So they're the ones who have that responsibility to try to alleviate whatever that issue is going on in the process and try to approve it as much as possible. And then finally, we might have the doctor. The doctor might be representative of a Six Sigma black belt or someone who's an expert in applying the Lean and Six Sigma tools and concepts because they're the ones who might be able to look at the process itself and the ones who might follow the normal methodology with their expertise in order to find what's the root cause and then lead the team to finding the improvement that will fix and sustain that particular improvement for the root cause. So let's apply those five steps that we talked about before for the five steps of resolving a problem and see how we can adapt that in that particular situation. Well first we started off with saying that we first need to understand the problem. Well in this situation it's like the doctor who is asking questions. The doctor is trying to understand the problem itself, understand my daughter's medical history or the things that might have led up to the pain that she was feeling. Well, that's really no different than trying to build a problem statement or trying to have a clear understanding within the business area that you're trying to improve and understanding what's really going on. Let's define this pain, define these symptoms and measure it in some way to really understand what the severity is or what the real pain is that we're trying to solve in the business. Well, the next step would be gathering reliable information. Well, that might be similar to the doctor who was taking the swab within my daughter's mouth. And that was the swab or the culture that the doctor was going to use in order to test for strep throat. So the doctor had some sort of suspicion of what the root cause was. So the doctor was trying to gather reliable information from the right source, not from my daughter's uh, foot or from her under her arm or some obscure spot. The doctor suspected strep throat. So the doctor knew that that the doctor had to go into my daughter's throat and take a culture from her throat because that's where she suspected the root cause was. Well, in the same way, when we we're trying to gather reliable information about a problem, there might be certain things we suspect could be causing some of that problem. So we need to make sure we're collecting reliable information, reliable data, so that we can test for that root cause and test our suspicions of what we think the root cause is. Well, next, after we get the reliable information again, we want to identify the root cause. Well, that's similar to the doctor who is running the strep test. The doctor didn't just, just assume what the root cause was and try to apply the fix for that. Well, the doctor had to take the culture again and apply the appropriate test, a test that's specifically designed for testing whether there really was strep throat or not. Well, in the same way, we need to make sure that we're applying the right statistical tools on the reliable data that we've collected. We're not just obscurely collecting data or finding some some unknown or obscure statistical test that might prove what we think it is we need to make sure it's the right test that we're applying to the right set of reliable data that we collected well the next step we might follow is fixing the root cause now that we know what the root cause is we need to try to have some sort of fix for it well in the same way this might be like the doctor who is prescribing the medication the doctor prescribed the right medi medication because the doctor knew what the right improvement was for this root cause for the strep throat my daughter was feeling. Well, in the same way, once we know the root cause within the business, what it is that's really causing this, these symptoms and the pain we're feeling in the business, now we can try to brainstorm what the improvements are that we think are going to fix that particular root cause. Finally, once we have the improvement in place, we want to make sure that improvement stays in place, that we sustain it. Well, it's really no different than my daughter taking the antibiotics. She felt the instant relief within an hour of taking the first dosage. But again, for anyone who takes antibiotics, you're familiar with how you have to go through the full full medication process, which is going out the full three, five, or 10 days in the way that's prescribed by the doctor in order to completely eradicate the root cause. Well, in the same way, we might put an improvement in place, but we need to make sure that improvement stays in place. We have to make sure that we have the right controls and the right plan in place to ensure that when we put the improvement in place and walk away, the improvements will stay and those root causes will not rear their ugly heads again in the future. Now let's take this one step further by translating this situation to the DMAIC methodology of Six Sigma. So this might be a great scenario that we're comparing this to, but again, how do we translate those five steps of problem resolution, even using this example of my daughter, Hannah, back to Six Sigma? Well, DMAIC is the Six Sigma methodology, an acronym that stands for five phases that are typically re used for resolving a problem using the Six Sigma tools and concepts. 
So let's go back to those five steps again that we might normally follow when we're trying to resolve a problem. Well, we would adapt that in six, to Six Sigma to make methodology in this way. Understanding the problem, that's similar to the define phase. And then gathering reliable, reliable information is similar to the measure phase within Demaic. Then when we're trying to identify the root cause of the problem, well, that's similar to the analyze phase. When we're trying to fix the root cause, that's like the improve phase. And then finally, when we're trying to sustain the improvement, that's similar to the control phase. Now, an important thing to consider is that these inner phases from measure, analyze, and improve are what I would believe to be some of the most critical phases within the entire set of all the tools applied for the Demaic methodology. For example, when we had the doctor situation with my daughter Hannah, the doctor already knew what information to collect and how to get it. The doctor had already some experience in seeing these kind of symptoms before and understanding what the potential root causes were. And the doctor knew how to test for that information and how to imply the results or at least to interpret or make the right conclusions from those results of the test. And the doctor was able to prescribe some improvement that was already pre-tested. Well, those are very, very critical. So it was really easy for the doctor to apply this stuff in the situation with my daughter. But when we're dealing with a situation when we have Six Sigma in the business, it typically is involving an area where we have an unknown solution. So we're using all the Six Sigma tools and concepts in order to help find what is the root cause and what is the right solution. Well, we don't have all those pre-tested areas like the doctor did in the situation with my daughter, so we have to figure that kind of stuff out. And that's what comes to the heart of the measure, analyze, and improve phases within Demake, because if we're dealing with a lot of unknowns, but the tools and concepts within there are really going to help us to understand what is the right root cause, and then what's the right improvement that will fix that root cause. So what if the root cause or the improvement are not known? Well, again, the doctor was relying on the prior analysis and done by the pharmaceutical companies to know that these antibiotics have already been tested. So the doctor already knew what the right root cause was that was going to solve this particular, this, uh, I'm sorry, the right improvement to solve my daughter's root cause for the pain that she was feeling. Well, again, Six Sigma is what's focusing on the analysis and the testing on the reliable information that we collect in order to really assess what is that root cause. So we're trying to identify when we don't know it otherwise, what are the right root causes and what are the improvements that are going to fix those root causes. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. Well, at this point, you may not have had an opportunity to actually apply some of the Lean or Six Sigma tools or concepts in leading certain projects. So I want you to try to think of at least three different problems that you might have recently resolved. And it could be something from a personal le level at home or, or maybe something at work. But just in general, try to find at least three different problems that you might have recently resolved and try to ask these questions for each of those situations. For example, like the things that we're trying to do in the define phase where we're trying to understand the problem, how would you have defined the problem that you had recently resolved? And what information was it that helped you to assess the size or the severity of that problem? Next, like in the measure phase, when we're trying to gather reliable information, you can ask these questions of yourself, such as what information did you actually collect in order to assess or measure what the problem was? Or what assumptions did you make about the information that you were collecting? And what if the information on your assumptions was wrong? How would, you have, how would that have affected the situation if you actually collected wrong information? And then next, like for the analyze phase, when we're trying to identify the root cause, in your situation, did you determine what was the root cause? And how did you differentiate between what the possible symptom was and what was the actual root cause? And what information might have helped you to confirm what was that root cause? And then in the, like the improve phase, when we're trying to fix that root cause, what improvements did you make that were going to fix that root cause? And did you actually test the improvement ahead of time to ensure that it would truly fix the root cause as you suspected it would? And what have, would have been the outcome if you implemented the improvement, but then you found that it didn't fix the root cause afterwards? And then finally, like the control phase, when we're trying to sustain improvement, have you, has the root cause actually reoccurred again? And if it has reoccurred, then why is that? And what measurements or controls have you put in place, or maybe should have put in place, in order to prevent that root cause from reoccurring? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.